Um, this is part three of a three-part video uh, servicing the temperature cartridge on a 915. Um, you'll need the uh, you need a seal kit, same as this. Uh, there should be a link to that seal kit below the below the video. So we'll get on and uh, start and service this cartridge. Okay. So first thing I think we'll do with this is we'll strip the cartridge down into its component parts. This I think is a yeah, I think this is a left hand shred on this as well. This is the the head work. And this is the this is the really interesting thing um, about this this particular cartridge. This coil is filled with gas and it's the gas expanding and contracting that that holds the temperature steady. Now there's two types of these, they look entirely different. One's like this, like a spring, another one looks like a crown. But they're, they both do exactly the same job. So if you've got a spring and you and you order the part and you get a crown, then um, don't worry about it. They, they both fit and it's it's perfectly okay. Um, so these are the parts in here. This comes out of here like that. As I say that this they all look quite different, but they do exactly the same job. Um, uh, this is the, part, the only place where you might have some difficulty. First of all, we'll remove these. These are the old gauze filters. And they come off fairly easily, just flick them apart like that. They're more difficult to put the new ones on, in fact. Now, this in here is the shuttle. This shuttles between the hot and cold ports. And we need to get this out because there's an O-ring inside here that needs replaced. This is one that often went inside here often causes a problem. This can be difficult to remove. So, in the first instance, if there's a screw thread in here, and you need to hold this like so, um, Oh, hold this like so and unscrew this now that doesn't always come apart very easily it's brass and stainless steel so what you sometimes need to do is go around this and give it a sharp tap not too serious just a good sharp tap and that will sometimes release the stiction here if um, if for any reason that doesn't come away you know very easily the next thing to do is get a kettle of boiling water and trickle some boiling water over this and that will expand the brass just enough that it should release it. In this case it should come up fairly easily because this one was uh, done earlier as they say. So it's pretty straightforward that this just unscrews, hopefully. Well, that was easier than I expected but this comes out like that. And watch, there's a small spring in here um, that shouldn't go anywhere but if you just be careful as you take that apart. Um, and there's a small piece of plastic that in some showers this will come apart there's a, a locating pin in that so be careful that if this does fall apart that you actually get the locating pin when you're rebuilding it back in the hole um, that's it there, I'll pop that like that and that like that, there's no need to take that apart and then the shuttle itself really should just push out which it does, as I say this just goes back and forth, goes back and forth between the hot and cold ports so that's the that's that stripped down to its components. What we need next is to lay out the uh, the new seal kit. This is a seal kit, and as with most Myra seal kits, they actually print the O-rings on this at the at the actual size, so that you've got a good idea uh, how to match these things up. Now I'll just pop these O-rings on the card. And so that's us got our O-rings ready. So now all we need to do is to start and rebuild the uh, the valve. So first of all, we'll start by this bit replacing this O-ring, which is uh, O-ring F. And you need something sharp or pointy to get the old ones out. Be very careful when you're putting the new O-rings back on. That um, oh, this is going to be a tricky one. Uh, that you don't damage them in any way. was a tricky one, but that's it off, and this is the new one on. So we need to 
tight one. And now you can start to see my point with Myra's horrible black silicon grease. And it's very difficult to get off your skin once you've used once you've got it on. Um, here we go now. We'll replace the O-rings, the, out, the outer rollings on this, and um, that sits this way. And so what we really want to do is put O-ring G and E on. So O-ring G. the next one. Well, better take the old one off first. And that's that part done. But now's the difficult one, this O-ring in here. This can be difficult A to get in and B to get out. As I say, if you use something like this, the, the probably the best plan is that the old O-ring is just to stab it with something sharp. And um, you won't be able to see this because it's just it's so encased and enclosed in here. I've just stabbed it and should be able to pull it out now. That's out of the groove. I don't know if you can see what I'm doing here. But there we go. So that's the old one. And it can be equally difficult to get this one back in. But um, you'll have to bear with me with this because it's a bit of a fiddle. So I managed to get that in there, I'm quite happy about that. Um, and so what I want to do is, the next thing to put back in is the shuttle. Now, we need to grease this, not too heavily, but first of all, grease around this inner O-ring. And then some grease on the shuttle, not too much in this, just enough to, to lubricate it. Um, rather than using Myra's horrible black stuff. Oops, wrong way around. Should have pointed that out, that this, the, the plastic bit goes in and this bit, to the sort of triangular three-spoke bit, and that sits at the bottom of the valve. And that should just pop in there. Wait. It can be quite difficult to get in, but it should move back and forward relatively easily. Relatively easily. Yeah, there we go. So it should move back and forward relatively easily, um, and that's it. And then we want to put. The, uh, this bottom part back. Now the answer is to give this just a, a little smear with silicon so that the next time somebody has to take it to bits it doesn't um, it doesn't stick with them. That's it. Um, sorry you can't see all this very clearly but it's quite awkward to do. So that's that bottom part. One thing that's handy to have something to wipe the silicon off your hands. Um, so that's the bottom part of the valve reassembled. And so now we're ready to reassemble the head work of the valve. Firstly, this, there's this o ring here that needs replaced. And it goes in there like that. and the rest of the head work. Um, so this just pops in here. There's no um, no grease necessary for that. However, that um, when you're doing this valve, uh, this is this is a bit that actually controls the temperature. I think I mentioned that before. And the um, <clears throat> that you want to do the whole valve and service the valve completely. And if you still got temperature control problems, it's then that you renew this. They don't go wrong very often, but they are very expensive. You're looking at about £75 for one of these. So the answer is service the valve, and if you've still got temperature problems, then you change that, but don't change that in the short, you know, if you don't have to. So this bit goes here, and what we need to do is have a wee bit of grease on this thread here, silicon grease, around the o-ring, and onto here. And that's that part all nicely 
squeezed into the headwork here and then this just screws into the body, the main body of the cartridge like so like so you have to catch the threads here Left hand, left hand thread again, um, and that's that reassembled. And we're now ready to pop this back into the. Oh, sorry, we're not. I forgot to put these uh, the filters on here. So these go on. They can be a bit of a fiddle, but it just gets it pushing this through, hopefully, and then folding it back. It's difficult to do when you're trying to. Show, oops, show on the camera and then just fold that back like that and it, it folds and locks it in place and, um, I think three pairs of hands would be useful for this one that's then locked in place so Nice set of new filters on that. And this is ready now to get popped back into the body of the shower valve. So we screw that back in and then the next thing we need to do is to start and set the temperature. And I'm just about to go in and do that in a moment or two. Okay, so as I say, we're now going to set the temperature on this. I've put the flow cartridge back together again. Nothing terribly complicated about that. It's really just a, uh, a reversal of the, the, the way we disassembled it. Setting the temperature is slightly more complicated. The, the one thing I noticed um, that there was no, this is a small thrust washer, and it's quite important that there, was, there wasn't one there when we took the valve to, to apart. So presumably somebody's been in at this valve and had a, you know, tried to do something with it beforehand and uh, either lost that or forgot to put that in. So thrust washer, then the hub, um, then the circlip, and the knob, and the cap. But to set the temperature, what you need to do is, when we've got the valve on and up and running, we need to have this take this hub off. And now you'll notice that there's a stop here on the um, on the body of the cartridge, and there's a stop here. So what we do is, in the first instance, we turn the water on. We assume we've got plenty of hot water in the tank ready to go, and put this on upside down. And what we do is we turn this whichever direction we need to to get to the, the sort of set temperature, the temperature we want the valve to, to, to run at. Um, and it's really just a case of screwing this back and forward until you get the right temperature. When you get the right temperature, you probably want it just a little hotter than you would normally like. Not too hot in case you scald yourself, but just a little hotter than you would normally like. When you've got to that stage and got the valve set properly, take this off and you set this so that this butts against the stop here and that means that you when you turn the, the um, when you turn the temperature up you can't go beyond that position and that means that you can't scald yourself so assuming it's set then that's all we need to do then is to pop the circlet back on and the um, and the knob circlet knob and cap now, you may have to do this more than once to get the temperature just set just the way you want it. But um, underneath the video, um, we should have a link to our site with sort of written instructions how to do that. Um, and other than that, it should be fairly straightforward. That's the valve serviced. Um, uh, a good valve, and if it's been serviced properly and there's no problem with your water, this should last you now for many more years.